The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is honestly a truly spectacular movie. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel Lifestyle Critic. I hope you're doing well. In this video we are going to be reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now I just wanted to say off the bat as well, I absolutely loved this movie. I think it's so much better than people give it credit for and it really did continue the darker, edgier, more grounded tone of this universe really, really well. And I absolutely love the raw emotional connection that the Peter Parker character and the Gwen Stacy character had in this movie and in the first movie as well, which is why her tragic passing at the end of this movie just really does hit home as they just built up that connection so brilliantly throughout this movie. Also, the visuals in this movie are absolutely outstanding. Literally one of the best visuals that I've seen in any superhero movie ever created. I just think they've done such a good job in this film. And also, I do agree with what people say in terms of they use this movie in terms of springboarding the franchise that they're creating. But so what? I think it was absolutely fine that they were trying to build a universe with this character. Obviously, the MCU do it absolutely brilliantly. And they did try to do maybe a little bit too much in this movie. But I didn't feel like they stuffed this movie in the same way that Spider-Man 3 felt really stuffed as the storyline was really, really consistent. The visuals are obviously amazing and the character arcs across this movie were really, really good as well. Now, I do feel like they could have developed their villains a little bit more, but if you watch the deleted scenes, you'll actually see that they did a really, really good job in really fleshing up the Electro a little bit further and the hatred and resentment that the Harry Osborn character has towards Peter Parker and his transformation into the new Green Goblin is a little bit more developed as well and it would have also been really really nice to see the Shaylee Woodley scenes that they filmed for the Mary Jane character but I do actually understand why they removed her as they really wanted to focus a lot more on the Peter Parker and the Gwen Stacy relationship but you know that being said I do feel like this film is often unfairly and overly criticized and I actually really really enjoyed it and I'm really gutted that Andrew Garfield didn't get to do a third portrayal in The Amazing Spider-Man 3, as that could have been such a brilliant movie. And I feel like he did such a good job in playing both the Peter Parker character and the Spider-Man character in this movie, which I'm going to be breaking down for you in this movie review. So from a storyline point of view, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 opening sequences were absolutely brilliant. So much better than any other superhero movie that I've seen, and also better than any other movie that I've seen as well as the opening was just so brilliant. They really expanded upon the mystery surrounding Peter's parents and that plane hijacking sequence was just so fantastic. It literally felt like a thrilling action movie and I just feel like it was really, really cool. The Richard Parker character was really able to defend himself and was able to upload the video for his son to view later on as well. And then the chase sequence that the Peter Parker Spider-Man character has with criminal Alexi, that road chase sequence looked absolutely brilliant, how he was able to try to catch all of the vials as well, keep all of the public safe and stop the criminal Alexi as well, was really, really good. And then get to his graduation on time, which was absolutely brilliant as well. The speech that Gwen Stacy was doing was super moving, really, really powerful, loads of really nice lessons in that speech as well. And I really liked the cameo appearance that they had from Stan Lee in that opening as well. So I just feel like the way that they started this movie was honestly so brilliant. We're then introduced to the Harry Osborn character and I feel like they inserted him into the storyline really naturally as he is a childhood friend of Peter Parker but he's just been sent away to boarding school which is why he wasn't in the first movie and so I feel like not only is Peter being reintroduced to this character but the audience are also meeting this character as well so I feel like they were inserting this character really really well and the final few moments that he was having with the Norman Osborn character you can really see how much of an abusive and neglectful father he was and the thing that he passed on to his son is this horrible family curse and his life work from Oscorp as well. Speaking of Oscorp the organization just like they did with the Sam Raimi movies I feel like they did such a good job in really bringing the audience into the horrible business side of this corporation and now that Harry Osborn is right at the top of this organization you can see the power struggles with the vice president Donald Menken and actually this is quite comics accurate as this character in the comics tried to do a bit of a takeover of Oscorp, which is what he's trying to do in terms of really kicking out the Harry Osborn character, which I thought was really, really powerful and really gave the Harry Osborn character a lot to deal with from a business point of view. Next up, we have the brilliant on-off relationship with Peter Parker and with Gwen Stacy. And honestly, I just feel like the chemistry, the natural chemistry on screen between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone just looks so brilliant out of any movie 
that I've seen in terms of two romantic lead partners. I honestly feel this is some of the best work on screen. I know in real life, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone were going out and I just feel like they were able to bring so much authenticity and realism to this relationship. And also there were just some hilarious sequences. For example, when Peter Parker is helping Gwen Stacy escape the Oscorp Tower and how quick and witty he is in terms of using his spider powers and distracting all of the guards to allow the Gwen Stacy character to leave. I thought that sequence was absolutely brilliant. And just the raw emotion that he was feeling in terms of both being really happy and being really heartbroken when Gwen Stacy got the role to study in Oxford and just how he is communicating all of that I thought was super brilliant. He is obviously really protective of this character and also I just feel like her ultimate tragic passing was just super, super heartbreaking and you can just really feel all of the emotion, firstly because Andrew Garfield is such a brilliant actor, but also because you're so invested in this relationship and you've seen it across two movies, it just really, really does hit you when she passes away, which I think is just so brilliant from a storyline point of view. Now, from the main villain story arc point of view, I really, really liked what they did with Max Dillon and with Electro. I do agree that they could have developed it a little bit further, for sure, but I really love what they were doing in terms of representing this character that is often overlooked very unassuming and really is actually abused by quite a lot of people in his life and he is just craving and longing just to be noticed and when he incorrectly thinks that the Spider-Man character is his enemy after being really wired and manipulated by Harry Osborn then he becomes the evil villainous character of Electro and therefore his story arc across this movie is actually really really tragic and I'm really glad that we'll be able to see this character again in the upcoming movie Spider-Man No Way Home. Speaking of Harry Osborn, I feel like his descent into the Green Goblin is actually really, really good. Again, I feel like they could have expanded upon this a little bit further, but actually, if you watch the deleted scenes, you'll see that they did do a really good job in setting up this evil villainous character. The way that he just murdered brutally the Gwen Stacy character and dropped her from the clock tower. Now, it was pretty comics accurate, but I just think it was so haunting and so powerful, like I said before, especially after everything that they were developing with Peter Parker and with Gwen Stacy as well. Speaking of deleted scenes, there was also another deleted scene, well, loads of deleted scenes. In particular, another one which was showing that the Richard Parker character actually survived the plane hijacking in the beginning of this movie. And I thought those scenes were really, really brilliant as well. I feel like Andrew Garfield definitely could have won an Oscar for his raw emotional performance in those sequences as well in terms of seeing this character that he thought was dead and he was longing for for so long as well and just seeing him again was really really powerful. Ultimately I think the reason that they deleted these scenes is that they wanted to feature this character again in the third Amazing Spider-Man movie. I also really loved how they were dropping seeds for other characters as well such as the Felicia Hardy character coming into her fruition with the Black Cat character. Hopefully we'll finally see the Black Cat and Silver Sable movie one day as well. Also the tease for the Sinister Six was pretty cool. My assumptions are that we would have seen the Green Goblin character and Electro coming back. Also Rhino, we pretty much saw that character as well. Vulture, I'm sure would have been there as well. Doc Ock and Mysterio. I feel like we saw a bit of a masquerade mask and I'm sure that would have been this new interpretation of the Mysterio character. I love what they did with Norman Osborn as well. A very different interpretation of Norman Osborn than what we saw in the Sam Raimi universe. They're still really, really twisted and villainous as well. Again, I'm really gutted that we didn't get to see the Mary Jane scenes. I'm sure that Shailene Woodley would have done those absolutely brilliantly. Also, the Daily Bugle is teased in this movie as well. Peter is working as a photographer. You just never see J. Jonah Jameson or the Daily Bugle, but you do see that he's sending him emails, which I think is really hilarious. And the Aunt May sequences, I thought, are really, really great as well. There's another deleted scene of Aunt May encouraging Peter to chase after Gwen Stacy and that scene is really really great as well and so from a storyline point of view overall I feel like Amazing Spider-Man 2 is really really good. Whilst they did pack in quite a lot of stuff in this movie I feel like the main storylines they really really fleshed them out a lot and so from a storyline point of view I feel like this movie is actually pretty awesome. <laughs> So from a cast and characters point of view, like I said in my first Amazing Spider-Man movie review, I feel like they did such a brilliant job with all of the casting in this universe. They just selected all of the best actors and they are just playing all of their characters so, so well. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, of course, we have Andrew Garfield, who does such a good job as Peter Parker and as Spider-Man as well. He's graduated and grown up a little bit, but he still has a lot to learn. And I love how witty, edgy and hilarious 
this character is as both Peter Parker and as Spider-Man as well. The sequences that this character has are absolutely awesome. Like I said earlier on, the one where he's distracting all of the guards in Oscorp to allow Gwen Stacy to leave was absolutely awesome. All of his sequences with Aunt May, I think are just absolutely brilliant. You can also see that he is a bit of a photographer with the Daily Bugle as well, and he is stopping all of the criminals, Electro, Alexi, the new Green Goblin, as well, and also the heart-driven storylines that he has with Gwen Stacy are absolutely brilliant. First, when he's just overlooking and trying to protect her, then when he's really emotional about her going to Oxford, and then the tragic passing and how he doesn't know how he's going to continue with his life. I just thought it was really, really powerful as well. And then the storylines about his father, trying to find out a lot more about the mystery surrounding his parents' death, and also how he really was the chosen one for getting the Spider-Man powers as it had his father's DNA. So really, he was the only person that could then become the Spider-Man character, which I thought was really, really cool as well. And then the reintroduction of his former best friend, Harry Osborn, as well was a lot to deal with in terms of at first, they are trying to pick up where they left off in terms of their friendship, but then it gets really complicated when Harry wants some of Spider-Man's DNA and how jealous Harry Osborn is of the fact that Norman Osborn was always watching Peter and Aunt May. So I just feel like the Andrew Garfield character did so much in this movie and he did all of it really, really brilliantly. Next up, we have Emma Stone, who was also brilliant in this movie as the Gwen Stacy character just played her so effortlessly. And I think there's a bit of a nice lesson at the start of this movie with this character. She's putting herself and self-love first as she is breaking up with Peter Parker as he's not able to be there for her. But obviously her heart is always longing for this character. And also I really like that sequence where Harry Osborn suddenly scares Gwen Stacy in the elevator which is going down, which is a bit of a foreshadowing of this character then throwing Gwen Stacy down the clock tower. Also, I really like how this character was resonating with the Max Dillon character and was really feeling bad for this character suddenly disappearing. So I thought there was a lot of authenticity with having Gwen as part of the Electro and Green Goblin storylines. And like I said before as well, that sequence where she's escaping the Oscorp towers, I thought was absolutely brilliant and her trying to get the role at Oxford and then getting the role at Oxford and somewhat of a happy ending happening in terms of her and Peter moving in the future to Oxford, but then getting robbed of that happy ending I thought was so tragic with her powerful death sequence. So I just feel like Emma Stone was absolutely brilliant as the Gwen Stacy character. Next up we have Dane DeHaan. Now I was a little bit apprehensive about seeing his portrayal as Harry Osborn as I feel like James Franco did a brilliant job as Harry Osborn but I feel like Dane DeHaan is bringing a new take to this Harry Osborn and this Harry is a lot more darker, crazy and a lot more edgier as well. But because it's so well written you can really understand why he's doing what he's doing as unfortunately this character has a really deadly disease which is going to mean that he's going to pass away and also the power struggles at Oscorp I think are really really great with this character obviously as Norman Osborn is currently and temporarily taken off the map and so Harry Osborn has a lot to deal with in this movie if you watch the deleted scenes you'll actually see that this character is a lot more fleshed out for example you get to see the glider for the Green Goblin a lot earlier on you also see a bit of a resolution happening with his rival from Oscorp Menken and also you get to see his transformation as the new Green Goblin being a little bit longer and a lot more horror based as well. And also there's a lot more tension between him and Peter Parker as he sees that his father Norman Osborn was watching Peter and Aunt May so much more than he was his own son. So I just feel like it sets up those two characters absolutely brilliantly. Next up we have Jamie Foxx who also did such a good job as Max Dillon and with Electra. Like I said before, he's a bit of an overlooked character that is constantly abused even by his own mother and everybody that he works with. So I feel like they really did a good job in setting up this character that's somewhat a little bit of a nobody and just constantly wants to be noticed and really admires the Spider-Man character. But after he gets manipulated by Harry Osborn, then he sees Spider-Man as an enemy. And all of the sequences actually featuring Electro are really, really good in this movie. I love how they use slow-mo in some of the visuals with Electro and Spider-Man. I feel like those sequences look absolutely awesome. And then speaking of editing, they did this really nice trick with the Max Dillon character as obviously he's lacking in confidence. And when people are abusing him, he imagines what he wants to say to them, but then you actually see what he does say to them. So I just feel like what they did with this character was absolutely brilliant. Next up, we have Sally Field who is here as Aunt May and I absolutely love the sequences with Aunt May and with Peter Parker. They were absolutely hilarious and I just feel like Sally Field just brought so much warmth to that role. Next up we have Campbell Scott who was here as Richard Parker, Peter Parker's father and I feel like he was absolutely excellent especially in the opening sequence like I said before in the plane. I thought that sequence was absolutely fantastic. Obviously Peter is really admiring 
this father figure and when he gets to see him at the end in the deleted scenes I just thought it was super super emotional and really gutting that we didn't get to see that being expanded upon a little bit more in the third Amazing Spider-Man. Next up we have Felicity Jones who was really really great as Felicia Hardy. At this moment she's a bit of an assistant to Harry Osborn but you could really see the edginess in this character's portrayal and she would have just been so good as Black Cat in the third Amazing Spider-Man movie. It's a real shame as well that they cut Shaley Woodley's scenes and it would have been great to also have seen Mary Jane Watson in this universe but I really understand why they did it as they really wanted to focus on Peter Parker and on the Gwen Stacy relationship. Also I really like how George Stacy was making a couple of cameo appearances as a figure in Peter's head in terms of the promise that he made him at the end of the first movie in terms of he will leave Gwen alone in order to protect her which I think was actually really good advice as obviously unfortunately Gwen Stacy passed away at the end of this movie and also even though it's a criticism of this movie usually I really actually liked how they were setting up villains in this universe as well for example the Rhino the Alexi character was being set up as a mechanical version of the Rhino character obviously we had the Sinister Six and Norman Osborn who was going to return in the future as well and so I feel from a cast and characters point of view The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was actually pretty brilliant. <laughs> So from a visuals point of view, both of the Amazing Spider-Man movies honestly look absolutely outstanding and truly unbelievable with the visuals. In particular though, the second Amazing Spider-Man movie is just so good. First of all, that opening sequence with the plane getting hijacked was absolutely outstanding. Such a great way to start this movie. And then all of the Spider-Man sequences, the road chase at the beginning was really, really great as well. All of the sequences with him and Electro, like I said before, the slow-mo was really, really cool. All of the electricity battles that he has with Electro and with Green Goblin in the clock tower, all of those sequences look absolutely fantastic. Even just him swinging around New York looked really, really cool. And the Ravencroft building, how they were showing the evilness and the corruption happening in that place was absolutely chilling. And also Oscorp Towers, I really do get a chill down my spine whenever they show how scientifically advanced and evil that corporation is. And I really just feel like the world building that they've done with the Amazing Spider-Man movies are just so, so good. And so from a visuals point of view, all of the sequences in this movie were truly spectacular. So in terms of comparisons, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I think it has so much heart, so much emotion. And I just feel like it's really comics accurate as well. And I feel like it was really shocking, especially the final few moments in this movie and as such in terms of comparison I feel like it's a lot stronger than Homecoming the first and third Sam Raimi movies and ironically I think it's on the same level as the second movie from the Sam Raimi universe as well as the second movie from the MCU world Far From Home and so from a comparison point of view I think this movie is pretty brilliant. <laughs> So overall, I absolutely love the second Amazing Spider-Man movie. I think it's so much better than people think it is. I feel like from a storyline point of view, this movie was really, really solid. I feel like it was setting up its universe really, really well. The performances, God, they were absolutely outstanding in this movie. And in particular, the visuals were just super breathtaking, really, really cinematic. And the deleted scenes from this movie just really add so much more depth and layers. And I just feel like if we had seen those, maybe we would have got a third Amazing Spider-Man movie, which I'm still so gutted that we didn't get to see. But you know, as far as this movie goes, for all of the reasons above, I have to give it a solid 8 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.